makes me smile because uh, it, and it is not something that can be outsourced. Appreciate that the leveraging of virtual technologies for delivery of legal these are the five levels. First, there must be given Speaking at the Bench Bar and Vacuity Conference with the team, the survivor of the legal profession in changing world was the Justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Getri Chakono, in an address said that there's need to thrive in a changing world, most especially in the delivery of legal services and all its formulation through digital technology and e-platform, which is the model of operation that can only facilitate the efficiency, effectiveness, and expectation of the processes that are required under the rule of court. According to Justice Getri Tokono, in a presentation stated that three years of working at digital platform are shown that thriving towards the digitalization is the way to go if legal fraternity collectively as a community operate with the mood to share, synchronize, and also to study. We contribute to the expected change in the legal fraternity in Ghana. The market centers thriving through Instagram and Amazon. We should thrive just as we see social media communications thriving on Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp. We should thrive as we see the banking sector thriving in the MasterCard and Visa cards and device applications that our banks support our transactions with. We should thrive as we see the entertainment sector thriving between televisions, YouTube, and all the networks created to support the myriads of channels. And we should thrive as we see research services thriving on search engines such as Google. We should thrive just as we have seen book services thriving in e-books and specially created devices for reading such as Kindle. As is obvious to any casual onlooker, virtually all aspects of human living, including those requiring physical experiences such as smoking and partying, are being moved into digital and virtual realms. We ought to thrive because the delivery of legal services in all its formulations through digital technology and e-platforms is a module of operation that can only facilitate the efficiency, effectiveness, and expedition of processes required under the rules of court. Three years of working out this digital platform has shown that we can best move from these blips to thriving in the legal fraternity collectively as a community operate in a certain mode. I will place the context of this mode as one, study, two, share, and three, synchronize. There must be an assessment of filing fees and sometimes setting of dates prior to acceptance of filing. In the manual realm, the lawyer easily ensures the swearing of affidavits and marking of exhibits in order to file applications or processes requiring determination of fight requiring affidavits. She must also interact, and I've chosen to make the lawyer a she. She must also interact with the court system for the determination, so thank you, for the determination of filing fee and setting of dates prior to filing if applications are part of the process is filed. Experience has shown that we can thrive, not just limp along, if stakeholders act under the three headings of study, share, and synchronize, the justice delivery system must actively study how our various systems work, especially the e-justice system, and ensure the harmony of technologies needed to assess and work with the various systems we are operating. Also speaking at the event was the Dean of the University of Ghana School of Law, Professor Raymond Akumburo Aturuba, in a statement said that using social media as an additional source would do a lot of good to the body of legal profession in order to survive the changing world that changes is not only to move forward but sometimes backward in order not to lose the trust from the general public. If this happens, the legal profession will not survive in our changing world. Change does not always mean moving forward. Sometimes the best changes occur when we take a step back. 
when we move backwards, when we engage in what some philosophers have called critical sanctifying. Today, there is a growing concern that what lawyers put into the court's crucible is not law, but something else. That what the court said from the crucible is not justice, and that the profession is no longer honorable. We must together urgently work on this. For the day we lose the trust of the people from whom our constitution says justice emanates, that day we lose our essence, and that day we perish in substance. Although the forms of our funny wigs and flashy clothes and posh cars will live on as mere form. According to the Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana, His Lordship, Justice Kwesi Anim Yeboah stated that the lawyers opposed to be the strongest and the loudest defender or independent integrity and the importance of judiciary rather than serving as tool for distraction by using technology to promote chaos, violence, and destabilization in the country. The caustic attacks on that to the court, albeit unjustified. President Lekufaudu's only reaction to the very clean state election petition, which some scholars perceived to be wrong, was an approach, even though I disagree with it, I accept it. Such is a time honored standard of civility in law practice we should all aspire to observe at any time. As conveyed by the topic, the judiciary is indeed a large line of defense in every democracy. The history of this country has shown that the judiciary is the only arm of government that survives an overthrow of the constitution. This indispensability to our lives therefore goes without saying. Lawyers ought to be the loudest and strongest defenders of independence, integrity, and importance of the judiciary, rather than serving as tools for its destruction. Even more dishonorable is a lawyer who writes on public emotions and utilizes the technology to promote chaos, violence, and destabilization of the country. I throw a challenge to the deans of the universities here in Ghana to encourage academia to which they belong to undertake proper examination and critique of judgment for publication in the review of Ghana law, rather than resorting to social media with ill thought to and improperly examined commentary on cases and other matters of national importance. The feature of the revolution that the Ghana School of Law has undergone is the increased number of students admitted from about 100 in the 2000s to the current figure of about 500 every year. And the consequence that the total student population of the school now stands at over 2,000. A sincere examination of the fact will show that the huge numbers churned by the New York Law Faculties in 10 has been responsible for the unrelenting demands in the past 10 to 12 years for the liberalization of access to professional law courses. In plain simple terms, the faculties have produced every graduate under conditions determined by them, and therefore they, they, they demanded admission to the Ghana School of Law for their students. A huge dose of dispassionate introspection is required for the achievement of the twin objective of broadening access to legal education whilst preserving the integrity and quality of the legal profession. A powerful driver of change has been digital transformation enabled by technology and achieved by human imagination. Lawyers have become a segment of an increasingly diverse technology enabled, data-backed, and fit for consumer or business purpose legal function. Most lawyers are data consumers. Legal tech is turning out to be an inevitable tool for the execution of the functions of the lawyer. Advancement in automation, technology assisted reviews, artificial intelligence, and the legal technology generally have become such potent assets in the delivery of the service of the lawyer in modern times. Such that they guarantee that your clients will stay with you and other lawyers will want to work with you. In effect, a failure to embrace technology and develop oneself professionally in a virtual world implies extinction of one's law practice. It is consistent with this that I consider the launch by the judiciary of the legal web library a little over a year ago as part of a series of other interventions in the justice legal sector using information technology as a giant move by the judiciary in the right direction. In this regard, I also note that the Office of the Attorney General, the Ministry of Justice, is in the process of going fully digital with the personalization of an integrated information management system and digitization projects, almost near completion.
when fully rolled out, various components of the program will facilitate a data handling of all cases brought from Mr. Tangera and other task forces will be charged with. It also results in electronic management of records at the office. At the back, I note the very good work done so far by Dennis Law, a group of private legal practitioners, in utilizing technology to disseminate part time information, including decisions by our courts at the speed of lightning and with reliable accuracy. Such initiatives emerging from the back are indeed worthy of commendation and should be encouraged. Also speaking at the event was the president for Ghana Bar Association, Mr. Yao Achampon Boafo, urge all legal fraternity to continue to invest in technology and digitalization in order to improve on several aspects part of their profession. You cannot do today's job with yesterday's methods and be in business tomorrow. Going forward, I propose that firms invest and for those who have already not done so, to continue, who have already done so, to continue to invest in tech. According to the president of Ghana Bar Association, he encouraged all lawyers to come out with the solution in order to address the challenges that brought about the technology. Digitization, globalization of the pandemic in order to stay relevant. We should present an opportunity. I believe lawyers should endeavor to innovate and come up with solutions that address the challenges brought by technology, the digitization, globalization, and the pandemic. In a technology and digitization driven world, lawyers must try to stay relevant and acquire and maintain some proficiency and competence in information technology and digitization. That will enable lawyers to relate and communicate with a more diverse set of clients. It thus requires of lawyers to preserve their edge by expanding their expertise beyond pure legal work. Those who fail to embrace and apply modern technology legal practice will be left behind. There is no time for a lawyer to be Also speaking at the event was the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice, Honorable Godfrey Yobuadami. In his address, he appealed to the faculty to work tirelessly to improve the quality of their product and also plead with the bar to resolve the cases in the country where there is no other administrative tribunal to assist the judiciary in justice delivery. That continues to frustrate many litigants. Judges need to manage cases efficiently and restrain from the extended adjournments that stretch the duration of cases on duty. On their part, the GDA needs to pay attention to the issues of adjournments that are not sought on the decree grounds, indulged in by some members, which leads to delay and undermining of the administration of justice. 